It's so good to have you here in Ottawa and have you part of the Contemporary Conversation series that we're doing and, uh, you know, to have an iconic uh, photographer, artist, uh, um, is, is a real treat for us. Steve, you've really touched me um, personally uh, with a lot of your work. We're here, though, right here with Ellis Island. And it did, did your work really begin with Ellis Island? Did, did it? Did the impact of Ellis Island really change you? In particular, this photograph uh, was, a, was a real game changer. The ability to, to um, uh, make a photograph that would ins inspire people to want to give and save a place like Ellis Island. Understanding that there was history in these walls, in these rooms, a very much forgotten history. And so I discovered through Ellis that I could take not just photographs that had beauty, intrinsic beauty, but that had a subtext. There was a humanity in many of the rooms I photographed. And that was a very powerful learning lesson because it made me realize that um, my work could actually force change and create social change. And it was through that experience that I began to have a real need to want to experience that every time I created art. Uh, that that there there was a there, it reached a different level for me as an artist you know that that I could um, bring my the things that are part of my social consciousness and share that with others. So where where are we here? What is this? This corridor number nine is where all the doctors and nurses would travel back and forth to get to various infectious disease wards. So it has very special uh, and powerful. A meaning in terms of the context of what occurred there. And incredibly powerful in, in terms of how you caught light. The right side of the photograph, everything was lit brightly glowing, but everything was dead, and the left side was, was dark and everything was living. And suddenly this metaphor for me came so clear that this place was about life and it was about death. And then the glow at the end reinforced that you're traveling someplace else. and. Um, I think that's what the immigrant experience was. So you affected change. You did this whole series uh, with Ellis Island. You then went on to Katrina and uh, Sandy. And then you did this new series, Day to Night, which is really uh, prominent in your work now. How did you do that? The concept is that I, I, as technology evolved, I wasn't interested in just using tools to reproduce the same pictures I made with film. I saw this as an opportunity to push the medium of photography outward. And I began to explore the idea of changing time in a single photograph. So I photograph from a single point of view for 15 hours on average, and I shoot literally 1,500 images, edit them down to about 50, and then I decide where day begins and night ends. And on that, what I call a time vector, all the best moments of the morning, midday, afternoon, and evening get seamlessly layered together into one single photograph. I'm trying to put a face on time. I'm actually looking at something that we all feel intuitively but never can get our hands around. That's exciting. Yes. Thanks again for being here. Thank you so much. Good it's always a pleasure. Great pleasure. to see you. Thank you.